What is up, everybody? This is Recap Rewind. I'm Jay Lag. And I'm NB. And this episode is recapping and reviewing Riverdale Season 3, Episode 20. And it's called Chapter 55, Prom Night. And don't forget, guys, stick around for the end because we are going to go through our recap roundups, our best moments, our best lines, and some of your guys' best moments and best lines. So be sure to stick around for that. And as always, to our continuing listeners and our brand new ones, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the episode, y'all. What'd you think? Yeah. What'd you think? Um. Just uh, yeah. Give us. I'm just. Give us your truth. I'm just not. I'm not gonna comment anymore. I'm just gonna (laughs) um, go along with it. I was really excited for this episode because it was called prom night, and y'all know how much I love my high school drama. Right. But. Yeah, I'm still thirsty after the episode, so I didn't get enough of that. But how how did you like it? I totally agree in some regards. I think, well, no, in all regards, I definitely agree. I'm Guys, we are at the point right now, I think, as a Riverdale fan conglomerate, we have talked offline with each other and we have really, you know, come together and concluded that this season has been quite a wacky ass fucking season and we're all like very confused as to what's happening um and i think this episode is definitely a clear reason why we are conflicted because while i enjoyed some of the pieces that were in in the episode including like the horror chase scene i there was no place for it in this episode yeah. that was called prom night that really set us up for something that it wasn't. Um, it almost came to the point where I didn't even think they were going to have the prom this episode. I'm like, no, they called it prom night. Yeah. It has to happen. And then in the last 15 minutes, they rushed right through it. So I, yeah, I just honestly, like to your point, I just want, I just want them to have a prom. I just want them to have a prom, a normal prom Without murderers and killers literally lurking at every single window. I just want to say, before we do get into all of that, I just want to say, like, I really loved all the comments that we got from last week's podcast. Yeah. Because you guys literally made us feel like we weren't crazy. Like, we've been hating on this show for so long. And you guys were like, no, we totally agree, guys. Like, what the F is happening to our show? Like, why is it? Why does it feel so crazy? So just us seeing your guys' comments, like, under the video... And just, you know, talking to you guys on Twitter and Instagram, like, it makes us feel like we are not crazy. (laughs) That you guys totally understand us. It really makes us feel like, for sure. So thank you so much, like, for, you know, commenting and sharing your thoughts as well with us and whatever. And even if you don't agree with us, like, fine, that's totally cool. Like, people are going to disagree with our stance. Um, But yeah, no. Okay. But even that, like, if you guys have a reason why you don't like, like, you don't agree with us, please give us all of your reasoning because right now there's so much happening that I don't understand what you could like about a show that is like, there's got like, there's like 17 storylines happening at the same time. Like, why would you, I asked Jay, like, I'm like, well, why would they even introduce prom? Like, don't even like, just call like another dance or something. Like, don't even waste, don't even waste the title of prom on this bullshit that lasted fucking like four minutes. Like not even like, don't even call it prom because you're amping everyone up. Like on Twitter, this is and this is the part that really annoys me on Twitter. They amp it up so much. They're like, so hard. it's prom night, it's prom night. I'm like, I know it's not gonna be like I knew it. I was like, it's gonna be like a three minute scene. Like it's not even gonna matter. And I still fell for it. I was like, no, maybe like they'll do it justice. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's like what you were saying in the promo video. It definitely throws back to that horror movie of the killer coming back to stalk a girl on her prom night. Um, I get where they were going with it. I just was, I felt really misled, especially with the promo pictures. I think, yeah, I think I would have definitely loved that for sure if it was on its own kind of like a shocking storyline but it's already entangled in this black hood mess that was from last season last season guys we are back at season two guys like welcome to season 2.5 character from season two like what the and f- like and the gargoyle king i was like this it's too much in the middle of yeah. all of this other shit Agreed. that's going on other th- like i would have loved this 
um, as its own thing. Anyways, whatever. So, <laughs> so we're going to get into it, but we're going to change it up a little bit and we're going to go through every single character and their storylines and see if that yeah. kind of helps with the way we break it down. Discussion. We're just trying yeah. to like, you know, change it up a bit since the show changes it up. Why can't we like we're just going to do something different. So we're going to start right off the top and hit up Cheryl because Cheryl has a shorter storyline and um, it's a little confusing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, what do you want from life? Like, what do you like, want? I really was asking. I was like, what do you want? Like, though? Do I don't want? understand. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting for wow what that's full circle <laughs> full circle so cheryl is the like prom committee member and she's the one that's doing this whole prom thing she comes in in the beginning of the episode and tells everybody that it's prom tomorrow or like something i was like how does no <laughs> she's one like, know Guys, tomorrow is prom <laughs> <laughs> like no one knows prom is happening at one point that's veronica I mean. like for such a for such an iconic night yeah. of their lives it was so downplayed and it wasn't hyped up at all because they haven't been at school in like four school. weeks <laughs> veronica even says she was like wow i can't believe we still like do prom and dances and stuff i'm like yeah like normal fucking schools like do. thank you like holy yeah. shit you called yourselves out like it doesn't- that line killed me because i felt like the writers were like guys we know this shit's crazy yeah, right now but, like, like just hold give on us a break. <laughs> yeah so So she's prom queen, like she's a prom committee and she wants to be prom queen. So she's like, don't forget to vote for me. And everybody's like, oh, whatever, weirdo. And did she want Tony to be her queen as well? Like, was that the idea? I mean, at this point, she couldn't even be prom queen herself. So I can't imagine them (laughs) doing like a lesbian storyline. Like, that's the thing. Yeah, but I wasn't, I wasn't sure because I was like, that's so tight. Like, you're with someone. Like, you would think that like, you want both of you guys to be together. You think that that would. Like, appointed as prom queen and queen. You think that that would be her storyline storyline and that would be her like yeah. end goal but no she's in a farm that won't even let her be prom queen to begin with so like forget the fucking lesbian storyline like, which is probably a little bit more important to, to talk about than and she's going after like the most heterosexual like freaking like yeah dance you know what i like, mean why? like she's she's been, she's been finding herself this whole season and she's like i still want to be prom queen and hang with someone like like what why like, since when do you give a f- like stick up for your girlfriend stick up for your relationship like make it known yeah <laughs> make it known girl you know what i mean yeah. like it just felt so like it like all of her se- like all of her storylines this season what they weren't there this was like season one cheryl yeah you know? and tony Anyways. and tony sitting there being like girl i support you i'm like girl yeah where's your backbone go like where is your where yeah your i was like go? don't you want to be queen like yeah fuck. Uh, anyway so the entire time she wants to be queen and evelyn comes in and like pops her bu- bubble while they're like selling tickets and she's like sorry girl but you can't be queen and be a part of the farm because it's against the rules to like have a hierarchy i'm like number one it's one fucking night so like let her have one night and number two like evelyn you're 35 years old and i'm so glad that cheryl calls her so out she said she's it like, <laughs> yeah. she's like bitch you're fucking 45 years old what are you even doing here and so anyways yeah. she like she tells her off but then she tells her dad on her or sorry her husband her boyfriend fucking i don't even know so uh, so whatever edgar talks to (laughs) cheryl and cheryl uh basically says like i want to do this and like maybe it'll help me like raise the farm's like status and their profile and edgar says you're not allowed to do this you basically have to choose between your dead brother or prom and that like scares her so she's like okay never mind never mind i don't want to be prom queen anymore so she gets all pissed and annoyed and I w- do you still find it weird that we still don't know what the fuck he's doing for them to see their dead like no. brothers and s- like do you, don't you find that weird that we don't know how he's doing it do i find it weird yes do i care no <laughs> like, you're like does the whole season seem weird to me yes <laughs> I'm like does it matter anymore that she can see her dead brother seriously. and nothing's being explained absolutely not seriously like they're definitely on drugs or he like puts them into some meditative state but i could care less guys jason's been dead for two seasons <laughs> it doesn't matter to me why his crazy ass uh. sister can still see her dead ass brother Anyway, so she finally gets so threatened. But then when prom comes around, she starts to, like, second guess herself. She's like, I don't even think that, like, the farm is even fun anymore. It's like, she's like. Yeah, she's like, I don't want to be a farmie anymore. I'm like, bitch. I want to be, like, prom queen. You 
literally had so many reasons, so many better reasons to leave the farm. And this is the <laughs> fucking reason you're deciding like, to leave the farm. Like, this is her reason. Like, what is... she can't be proud, queen. <laughs> Like, what is your fucking priorities in life right now? Bro, I don't these understand. These characters are whack. <laughs> so, oh my God. like, that's the thing. I don't understand, like, what her, like... At the same time, I'm sure a lot of you would argue this is typical Cheryl, yeah. like getting into herself and being like, oh, yeah, I want to be prom queen. Obvi, like it's more important than anything else in the world. And she definitely flip flops and she's definitely hot and cold. And like, that's what Cheryl is. And that's who she is as a person. But it didn't make sense in this moment. And for her to find like, I'm sure she's going to now like detract and she's going to be like, I don't want to be a part of the fucking farm anymore. Is that enough of a reason? Are we going to really like let her back in when she literally fucked over basically everybody, including Betty? Like, come on. Like, you already know that they're going to do that. Yeah. You know, it's just stupid. So I also just want to say here quickly. Sorry. um, I didn't say it before, but I did like how they call the the prom like fire and ice. Yeah. And I felt like that was like pure Game of Thrones. Like, totally. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I see you guys. Like, you guys have potential there with your writing. I'm like, just get (laughs) everything else together. Yeah. (laughs) And then it's not definitely not game of thrones no <laughs> that's for no. fucking sure De- let's not no and you can't compare i'm not comparing it at all i'm just saying like it was cute how they wrapped that all together yeah but anyways whatever so yeah. let's move on to our girl Vilo. Vilo. so she is now like becoming like a fucking business mogul of the city of the town so this is my question to you how the did her storyline intersect with Archie's this season? Like, <laughs> she went from owning a freaking like nightclub, yeah, to now she's like in a casino, yeah, and making money yeah. and serving people drinks, and now all of a sudden she's like in Archie's storyline. Like, it makes zero, zero sense. sense. There's zero connection to her story intersecting with his in his boxing journey. Yeah, there was nothing. It was just for them to like get push them back them together, together. Yeah. it made no sense yeah Absolutely. it made no sense so she's like yeah i want to promote it like now they're like like are where is reggie like where is this poor man he's doing like yeah he just did bad boys three and like fucking like so many movies he's like completely written out of the show like nothing nothing feels organic no. anymore nothing feels like oh this might have happened because of this like it all kind of just swayed into the next storyline. No, it feels so forced. Yeah. It feels so set up. Cause she, cause she says, she's like, you know what guys, I love this idea so much. Girl, you have two businesses. <laughs> like you can't open another business. Like go take care of your shit. Honestly. And she somehow gets a third mortgage on her fucking property. Cause she, you know, she already got the one alone the other time. <laughs> so she gets like a second lien on her, on pops or Le Bonilla. Yeah. I don't know which one it was. Yeah. And pops like, wait like what are you doing this for though like what's going on he's all like like, weirded out he kept like giving like looks the entire episode and i was like pops has something to say like let him say something oh he's go he's gonna say it so (laughs) he's like oh like you and archie are together again she's like i'm just like helping him as like a friend and like a business partner and i'm like that's so offended the last time you had a business partner you fucked him and his name was reggie mantle let's forget about him and like she's making it sound like as if it's so surprising he's like oh you and archie are together she's like no (laughs) we're just friends He's like, oh, okay. Like, I saw you guys, like, here for the first time ever. Like, shut up. Yeah. Like, Pop knows more than anyone else. Honestly, he's, like, sitting here sipping a milkshake being like, y'all bitches are fucking crazy. So, (laughs) so it turns out that Pop found out a couple months back. I don't know how he found out, but he found out that the deed that Hiram gave Veronica last season was a fake deed to Pop's diner. So cool. cool. <laughs> Can we go back to season two now? Cool. Cause none of this was actually real. Nothing. None of this makes what Eddie. The hell? <laughs> How can you get a bank loan, Veronica, if your deed oh is fucking fake? My God. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> and like if you ask writers they're like well hire him hire the bank yeah. mortgage broker to fake the, the mortgage Honestly, too okay i'm dead like okay. it doesn't like and here's the thing like i know that people were hating on Hiram so much last season but why did they completely write him out of the show like he's not even in any episodes to like lurk in a corner or like sit in an office and be like hey, hey, hey. like i need he's to just in the sauna with elio exactly and i like while i 
totally live for that moment. <laughs> You're like, no, I like that. I scene. totally live for that moment. He was not. He's not like interacting with anybody, and I'm like, what's happening yeah. with you? Like, why isn't he even present in the episodes anymore? Even though like every storyline is now connecting back to him. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like he's been so MIA all season. So. Uh, and obviously, anyway, so okay, uh, 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 I'm like fucking so, glitching yeah. out, guys. So basically, Hiram basically owns Pops and right. Lebonui, like as if this whole season basically never happened. And she's like, I'm and so honestly, bummed. honestly, like <laughs> in this moment, guys, seriously, in this moment, I was like, oh my God, she's going to go back to like season one, Veronica. She's going to be like, fuck this shit. I'm right. done owning a business and I'm going to go back to school. Like that was my initial thinking of like, I was so excited that she had now like kind of cleaned her hands yeah. of all of this because she doesn't even own it anymore. She could go back to being a teenager. Right. Mm, you know, like, yeah. You get to a point where, like, you wish that this season was just fake. Like, I'm like, I just hope this is, like, not real. Guys, we've been hoping <laughs> it's been a happened. dream this whole time. I don't know yeah. <laughs> what to do anymore. So, yeah, unfortunately, she doesn't decide to go back to school. She's like, Archie, can you help me take down my father? And he's like, sure. Okay, wait, let's talk about this Varchi moment because, yeah. you know, our Varchi fans are going to ask us about it. So yes. it was really cute. It was cute. Like, even when, when Bughead were sitting in the student lounge, they were like, oh, like, we're going to go to a prom, whatever. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And then Archie gives, like, a look to Veronica. So like, cute. Oh, like, it was It was really so cute. cute. He's like, mm. And then, like. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, but what am I going to go with because Josie's gone now. <laughs> um, like, it would have been cool if Josie stuck around for prom. Like, and one she goddamn left, episode, geez. guys. Like, fucking Katie yeah. King couldn't wait one episode. Fuck. Seriously. Um, and then they see each other in the hallway again. Then he was like, hey, like, let's go to prom together as friends, yeah. whatever. And then they go to buy tickets. He goes to buy the ticket. And right. She's like, actually, we're going to pay separately. Because <laughs> we're, we're friends. business partners. I was like, okay, you're going to write that off on your tax rebate, too? Like, what's going on <laughs> Then your dad's going to do your fake taxes for you? <laughs> done guys this is so <laughs> whack oh my god uh, so yeah there were some really cute Varchi scenes i was really happy to see them at prom together and like even at prom she was like this takes me back to like the first um the sweetheart yeah, dance or whatever it was called in season episode, one yeah. episode one yeah i was like you know you know me i, I was know like you're so excited yeah, for that because it. it just took me back and i'm like i miss that so much i know we all miss it girl we all miss it i'm <laughs> yeah, crying it right cute. now so <laughs> it was cute and then she was like so basically my dad fucked me <laughs> over again can you help me bring him down he's like hell yeah i can i was like okay but like so we're back to what like, are they going to do can you please explain to me <laughs> what is their fucking plan I'm done. I'm are they done going to send guessing. him to jail are they going to trick him tricking him Where again is hermione like what are i haven't seen hermione in weeks this bitch went on a spa weekend like for like a month like she's gone she's like i don't even want to be a part of this situation anymore i don't know i don't know what their plan is but they're gonna do something i feel like it's I'm gonna just be over really bad hiram thing. being the villain like i'm just over that i'm just Same. over everything Same. i'm really over it like I just why can't they just live their lives as a normal just live, student? Have students? some tension, have some drama. It's fine, but like nothing, like not everything has to feel like I'm disowning my parents. It's the end yeah, of the world. I'm gonna send my, I have fake deeds. Like, what are you gonna like, send your dad to jail? Like, what are you gonna do, girl? Yeah. Get out of here. Like, go back to school. So, and we all know what happens to dads who go to jail. Mm. They break out and they have like hook hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking wild. Okay, so that's mostly Veronica's thing. She does try to yeah. encourage Archie throughout the entire like boxing situation, which I wasn't down for because even when she found out that Archie forged the signature, she was still like, cool. Are you going to still be a part of that fucking fight first, though? Like, she wasn't. Yeah. She was. And this is why. And for the Varchi shippers who are going to come for me right now. Come get me because I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> come at me, bro. Come at me because that is not a supportive relationship. Like your fucking mom is telling you to do one thing and your girlfriend's like, no, but like you can do both of them, right? Like it's totally fine. And also yeah, she I feel like her completely like yeah, ignores sorry. the fact that he forwards a signature. Like there is so many things about it that I was like, that is not a healthy relationship. I'm just you know, you right if now. that was Josie. She would have called him straight out. Oh, yeah. Right then and there. 100%. She would have been like, you forge your mom's signature. You better go back and like, you beg for it. Right. She's because she's she like a normal that. kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, whatever. That's Veronica's storyline. Varchi, fine. They're back together. Like, it's going to happen. 
Well, get ready for so, it. So yeah, so so in Archie's storyline this episode, we do see Mary Andrews come yes. back because last week was our last episode with Luke Perry, yeah. which was really effing sad. Um, so apparently he's kind of just out of town, and and it doesn't seem like they're really gonna resolve his situation by the end of this season. Yeah. He's probably like on a fishing trip, whatever. Like Mary's there, right? Um, and I did really really enjoy their dynamic. Um, maybe because I was already emotional because of like Fred just not coming back kind of. Right. Um, but I think one of the main things is that she doesn't want him to fight. Like she's like, no, like you're better than this. Well, like, the funny thing is, can you go to college? Like, as soon as she walks in, she's like, I'm not gonna stop you from doing your fighting. And then like the next thing, she's like, I'm gonna stop you from doing their fighting. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, girl, choose a side. You can't do both. So yes, to your point, she's, she's definitely back to replace Fred right now. And it was an awkward segue. You can tell the writing was like a little loose because like it obviously happened out of surprise because she's like, I'm just coming back from Chicago. Like, I'm just like here to hang yeah. out. And I'm like, OK, that doesn't make any sense. But so she's back and you could tell, like, I will say that, you know, Mary Andrews slash Molly Ringwald, she, she definitely looked like she was like crying the entire season, like the entire episode. Yeah, Her eyes really were like did. watery she, she, the entire yeah. episode. It's probably because she's emotionally like taking over for a role well, that the person that's supposed to be playing it is not there and for. Honestly, like the lines that she said, especially that last scene with them in the kitchen, yeah. her lines literally sounded like they were coming out of Fred's yeah. mouth. Like she was very accepting. She was like, don't worry. Like I'm going to be here for you. Like you got to do your own thing and like follow your path. Like it sounded like something he would say. And, and then like, yeah, even when, it just made yeah, it more emotional. Even when Var- uh, Archie was like, now you have to let dad come around. I'm like, he was supportive of you the entire time. I don't think that he would ever. Seriously. Like, so obviously that line was flipped because like the mom would be like not okay yeah, with it. So true. Yeah, So you can yeah. see that there is obviously the writers are trying to, you know, pick up wherever they can. And I can't fault them for that. This is obviously something that's around a full tragedy. So like best of luck to you guys to write this in properly. But it's. It's whatever. You can't do anything about it. It's yeah. probably so the most forgivable. It's literally the most forgivable part of this whole show is the it's fact true. that it's like true. they can't write this properly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one of the biggest things that she kind of goes through with Archie is that she like she hires the army or like. Yeah. Some someone friend. From the cadets, like her lesbian friend like, from like the they, army or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> like she's like they do boxing too. So you should do like I didn't understand. the she's connection. like I box like, her. She, she boxes him? me. Like, <laughs> did she want him to join the army? Like is that where she was going with that? Yeah. I mean I, I don't know if she said that she wanted him to join the army. But she said this particular program will allow him to do boxing and then get like all these different like, things in so order random. in his life. I know. I was like is it going to be like he's going to go to the fucking army I now? I feel like. I feel like that might happen. Like, I feel like the fact that they even just dropped that in there this episode, it feels very like, but why Possible. the army? Like, yeah. So who knows? Like, maybe after high school, he'll want to go to the army. Well, for one thing, he this bitch doesn't even want to go to college to begin with. I'm like, bro, yeah. stop your fucking mouth right now. So anyway, she brings in this recruiter and they talk and he's like, OK, I'll show you. I'll do a showcase for you on the Friday. And then he was so excited because then he could do like the Friday showcase. And then the Saturday is the actual competition where he forged his mom's signature for Veronica. So he does it. But then when he goes into the weigh in, he's like, you're too fat. You can't do this right now. Yeah. So he's like, I'll cut my weight. And he's like, are you going to cut it before Friday? And then Archie's like, Friday. I thought it was on Saturday. And then the guy's like, yeah, we are like a fully registered like tournament, but we just decided to change our minds over one fucking day. Yeah. Like what fucking contest is this that I you guys change your mind over like a second? Like I anyway. So obviously what happens is like Archie yeah, obviously fucking bumped. like dies from exhaustion yeah. and like he basically passes out like in the ring yeah. and everyone's like, oh my God, Archie, like, oh, and they're like, you can't fight anymore. <laughs> like you're too like exhausted. Like it was just, yeah. you know where the story was going to go. Like it was so obvious is um and i'm not even mad at archie i just i'm not mad at him as a character i just feel like he's trying to find himself and he's trying to find like what the f he wants out of his life and and that's fine it's just it's just a very random storyline of course with everything else that's happening too like i just i I just question everything right now in the show (laughs) big question mark yeah so that's his big thing 
Um, he- I do love, sorry, I do love the way he says, like when he talks to Mary at, at the end, he's like, I tried um, music, I tried football, now I'm doing boxing. Like he's like, I he's like i don't know what i want and, right. and that's totally fair and i love that line from him because it's true like he's still in high school he's not going to know what he really wants out of life he's trying all these different things so i'm glad the writers i like, kind of threw that in there because we were even making fun of him too we're like how many things does this guy have it's like true. he tried like 10 different sports yeah. <laughs> like but that's the thing like i understand that archie is this like character that we're supposed to like look to and be like oh he's just like finding himself but he needs to have some level of grounding. He can't be doing crazy shit every single episode and every single yeah. season. Like, I like that he was in school. There was a little bit of structure there. So I don't yeah. know what it's what it's going to take for him to get back But when I say, like, there. finding yourself, when I say finding yourself, I don't mean, like, breaking out of a prison. Yeah. Like, that's too extreme. Like, what he's doing now, fine. Boxing, wrestling, with your high school, yeah. football, fine. That's normal. But, like, yeah, breaking out of a prison cell, like, that was too crazy. Like, his first half of the season was way too crazy. Yeah, 100%. Like, at this point, I'm surprised. Like, he's not going back to school, right? Like, he's not really graduating well, he his was junior the, year. He was, wasn't he? But he is, but he's also like, I'm not going back to college. Anyway, I don't fucking know. Let's move on. Actually, I think he's supposed to be behind now. I don't think he's in the same grade as them anymore because he missed so much. Yeah, that's what I mean. I feel like he's, like, basically repeating his junior but year. maybe... I think they're in grade 11 right now and maybe he's like back in grade 10. <laughs> they're like, you're going to get <laughs> held back. So knows? like, whatever. These guys don't even know this, their own storylines, let yeah. alone like what high school year these guys are in. Anyway, let's move on to Jughead yeah. and Betty's storyline. But let's start with Jughead. Juggy Jug. So yeah. Jughead has a really quick conversation with Jellybean. It's kind of pointless, but if Je- yeah, Jellybean. She's like, I miss my mom. I miss my mommy. And I was playing with Ricky and he found this like gospel book that we were supposed to look for. So that's Jughead's mission. Talking to Jellybean, mm-hmm. he finds out that there's this gospel of the Gargoyle King that is um, like, you know, will give all the secrets of the Gargoyle King. So, um, so Jughead decides to like, he ends up becoming kind of like the side detective for his dad in every single case. And yeah. it's the thing that really kills me about FP on a general level is FP always told him like, you need to go back to school. You need to focus on school. But then he like calls him out and tell, asks him to like help yeah. out on a fucking murder scene. So I don't know what his like parenting style is right now, but it's a little <laughs> whack. And so uh, they end up at this like bus. So the school bus that they found in the junkyard. And first I thought it was the bus that like they crashed in. But no, they. Yeah. It, I thought it was like a next bus that all the. It was like a school bus. Yeah. It's all where all the gargoyles were sleeping. And yeah. um, they find the gospel in there in like a tiny little area. But he doesn't tell his dad because obviously his dad is going to be like, give it to me. I'm going to learn this myself. So. He does that and then he takes it to, to Betty and then like they start their own adventure. So I'm going to move to Betty and she'll be like our final conversation because she has a lot of the yeah. shit going on this episode. So yeah. right off the top of the episode, just going all the way back to the beginning, it turns out that the whole bus is flipped over and they found body parts and it matches five like people that were in I the bus. I love how FP, I love how he explains this because he's like, because Betty's like, how do you know like everyone survived right. like or everyone died? Like how many people were in there? He's like, okay, there was like five prisoners <laughs> in the bus. One <laughs> bus driver driving the bus. Five heads no six heads and then like five bodies so five plus one equals six goes yeah they're all dead so your dad is dead like oh okay cool (laughs) like he was doing the math all the while yeah he's like freaking hooked on phonics over here and like fucking betty's like my dad's definitely alive i don't know what you're fucking talking about (laughs) yeah like she didn't even believe the script she was like guys my dad she's like no this is not happening and fucking and then the best part is like he's like you like betty like your dad is dead (laughs) and then like she calls him morgue the morgue's like betty your dad's dead <laughs> like everyone <laughs> she's like nope, nope still don't believe it <laughs> still don't believe it he's definitely still alive yeah like, at one point he even um, goes to she even goes to alice and she's like i think dad is still alive and alice is like uh wrong <laughs> like he's definitely <laughs> dead <laughs> and she's like why like no one no like, one believes her it's just so wild. um the wreckage though to me and they didn't really talk about this because whatever but the wreckage to me looked like an explosion right of like some like toxic like plants or something. I was like, I bet you fucking like what's her face? I bet you like Penelope like 
did some next level plant bomb and okay. <laughs> like <laughs> blew up the bed. We'll talk about <laughs> Penelope, but I definitely think she has something to do with the storyline. For sure. Um, 100%, especially by the end of this episode, I have major theories. So, um, so yeah, so he's out potentially i mean he's out obviously by the end of the episode we find out but betty also notices a tattoo that her uh her her mom got like an infinity symbol and then when she matches it up with the ones that were on kurtz's back that he just got apparently they go to the tattoo artist and he's like yeah there was someone that came in like months ago with the exact same tattoos and he was like sandy blonde hair sandy blonde hair and he has blue eyes and he's got this like energy about him and she was like it's edgar ever never so it sounds like chick I'm like it does sound like chick good so weird call that's a yeah. very good point, and I hope you guys yeah. are listening because I think we solved the Gargoyle King mystery. I don't give a shit, though. <laughs> and this is the thing. Like, <laughs> dude, whoever the Gargoyle King is, he probably has unlimited funds because the shit that this Gargoyle King has off, to do to set up his, like, yeah. his like theater, like, fucking, like, puzzles. Yeah. That shit, like that shit's expensive. Like he turned off the lights. He has like red lights. He's got like cups. He got like graffiti on the mirrors on the walls. Like that shit takes prep He's time. He's like had to buy that costume like seventeen times. Like I don't even yeah. know. Like I can't. So like whoever this person is behind this role, like they they have to have like a team of people that's like designing these like you yeah. know obstacles and shit. It's probably Chick it and can't Charles. Just be a random like. What if it was Chick and Charles? Oh god. Would you be okay with that shit? I bet you. I mean, it's possible. What do you think? Unless it's Chicken Edgar and like Edgar was like, if you scare her enough, she'll come to the farm. Right. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. know. I feel like maybe Maybe Charles could be involved in this because like they did make a point earlier this season that he isn't like she couldn't find his grave. Right. So. Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't be surprised. That like Chick ran back to him and like they're like doing this shit to like fuck up the Coopers even more. So anyway. She ends up going to Edgar's like place while they're like having a therapy session. And she was like, take off your shirt right now. And Alice is like, oh, my God, do you want to be a part of this situation or what? And <laughs> Betty's like, no, you have the tattoos on your back. He obviously uses this moment for like Chad Michael Murray to show how often yeah, he goes to the it gym. It had to happen. He yeah. takes off his shirt. It was pretty hot, but I will still give it to Hiram just as a side note. And oh, hire him <laughs> every day, any night, every morning, like anything. Like he beats out Chad Michael Murray for yeah, sure. Yeah, but he's daddy. Yeah, he is daddy. So, uh, yeah. So he takes off his shirt. He doesn't have the tattoos on his back. And Betty's like, "But what? Who could it be?" So she's still confused. She's not sure who it is. But we get distracted the entire episode because Jughead's like, "It don't matter. I got the gospel. All we need to do is rig the prom, and then you can become prom queen. And then we have to change the theme. And then you." Like the way that like I love how they still think that they're gonna win this game. Like, like that's the guys, best part. what are you? What plan do you have in your brains that you're gonna actually like, be? Just go to your prom and have sex after. <laughs> just be normal teenagers. Like why? Why do you have to play this stupid game? So yeah, they initiate this plan <sighs> where they want to like trap the gargoyle king at prom night. So. <laughs> They, like it sounds so dumb when you see yeah, it. Yeah, as I'm talking, it it's so like stupid. so fucking whack. So whatever. So they change the prom theme to like Renaissance fair so they can wear like weird outfits. Like I don't know why they so had to So it was basically wear. the same as like Game of Thrones, Ice and Fire. Yeah, basically. They're like, okay, Game of Thrones is back. We got to do Like Game what of was Ice and Fire going to be? <laughs> like you were going to exactly. be dressed up as like icebergs? Like <laughs> what? Whatever. So like, what the fuck? so um so she goes into prom and like this is the one part that i will say was a really good moment like the opening of prom was my favorite part of the whole episode i think (laughs) like everybody walks in everyone's taking pictures really quickly as a side note fangs is now dating kevin officially question mark oh okay what's what what's a what what's a what like i'm so confused guys can you please clarify this for me i know a lot of people were like of course fangs was like bisexual earlier last season like when he kept giving kevin looks i'm like 
We never got that from him, number one. And number two, yeah, they kissed during the musical, but I thought they were all on fucking drugs. Like, I didn't think it was for real. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess they're kind of together because they walked in together. They took a picture together. But I just think it's a wax storyline. And once again, Kevin is back on someone else's arm. Like, can he please be single for five fucking seconds? Like, please, just give him one goddamn season that maybe he's single and he doesn't fuck another student. And, like... Anyway, anyway, I'm moving on. So, yes, yeah, the opening se- I, I yeah. the opening sequence was cute. Everybody's dancing. Everybody's in their cute little outfits. So cute. Like, they were so, so adorable. Cute. The slow motion conversations. You know, Cheryl's talking to Tony. She was like, I don't want to be part of the farm anymore. And uh, then it cuts to, yeah, Jughead and Betty. Ju- uh, Betty decides to r- rig it. And um, she puts in, like, these extra votes. Also, on a side note, the pretty poisons who are now like they've gone completely rogue they're like not even like they don't have a leader anymore because tony like fucked off so now pretty poisons and the serpents are kind of like banding together to be the bodyguards of the prom night which i was like okay that's cool i'm okay with that so they're like blocking all the exits they're making sure that everybody's like not coming in or not coming out um and so betty throughout the whole night she gets this card from some random guy and he's like are you the gagoa queen here this is for you so she reads it and it's like meet me where ascension night began and uh come alone don't tell anybody or like everybody in this auditorium is gonna die so she obviously dips by herself without jughead without telling him as yeah she doesn't tell him like as they're mentioning like who prom queen is i'm like girl can you not just stick to the one can you just wait? fucking plan your plan was to be crowned prom queen and then together you will find okay. him it doesn't make like, any sense also was wasn't ascension night like when the flashback episode yes yes which so, is why she so had all happens- those like moments wh- where she was like pretending to be alice and then she wasn't alice anymore so it really confused me yeah because like they kept they kept swiping back like as she's running right. to the bathroom whatever like they kept swiping back to like the scene of like ba- basically alice right. in the bathroom yes. discovering like the drinks and i was like but i don't understand like why supposed to, like why are you guys flashing back yeah. like that was the flashback episode i get it that was the past and this that's the present. thing like <laughs> betty wouldn't have <laughs> like, i don't need the betty wouldn't have forward. had a flashback like that because she wasn't her she was just exactly playing she her didn't mom know. <laughs> she wasn't her that's mom that's what i mean like she wasn't her mom <laughs> exactly so, like, like it's not like you're jumping back to another moment for right. betty like that was her mom's memory that's this not isn't, betty's memory this isn't charmed like that's like tomorrow night <laughs> like, on the, the fuck, cw <laughs> like what's happening so anyway i will say it was a cool scene but i didn't i don't know why they switch back and forth so anyway she gets to the bathroom and she sees the cups and she was like no fucking way i'm gonna drink from those cups so she runs out of the bathroom she sees the gargoyle king down the hallway and she's like what are you waiting for and so she huh? she's like yelling at him and then she's about to pull out a fucking gun because she went to the shooting range earlier in this episode and she became like <laughs> fucking bullseye yeah. tom over here she's got a pistol now yeah so uh, she's about to like and then she shoot the gargoyle yeah. king and then she gets body fucking slammed like body <laughs> murked body murked like this was something like like, like football hit like she yeah. got murked she, like, so bad that i thought she was literally dead i'm like is she alive like her head went smashing into that wall i'm like oh my god yeah. like how do you survive that hit and yeah. then she gets up and she's like dad <laughs> like this fucking idiot like body slams his daughter into the wall like that would have killed her for <laughs> sure also also the one thing i will say while i love the chase scene he could have killed her right then and there no, no like, bro he could have killed her like 10 times over there was so many it was like john snow and the white walkers like yeah. there was so many moments where he would like so he would have like slashed her and she would have been dead yeah, yeah. like instead of body check Hallow? like instead of body checking her he could have slashed her neck and been he done with slashed her. exactly <laughs> he has a fucking hook hand now like god um do you think it's Hal for sure, for sure? Yes, I do think it's Hal for okay. sure. Um, because I can't imagine anybody else with a like without like, a hand out there. She's basically like halfway through like fighting. She goes, "Dad, stop!" <laughs> and like he doesn't say anything. And it's like, bro, we know you're the Black Hood. Like this yeah. is from season two. Like we know you are the guy. Just say like, "Stop, Betty, I'm gonna kill unless, you." Unless like, he didn't talk again. Unless it is Chick. Unless it's not him. Unless it is Chick, yeah. and he like cut his own hand off, and he's like gone but, to like fucking. 
kill her. But like, like he's even pissed. the body, like the body type looked like Hal. Like it was like it's thicker, true. like fatter. Like unless it wasn't like because Chick's really skinny. Yeah, maybe Chick will come back like beefed up. We'll see. Like <laughs> I don't <laughs> <Maybe>. know. <laughs> he's gonna get like all chunky. So, um, so he's chasing. There's this really cool chase scene. Like I said, I will say that I loved it because it was giving me. I know what you did last summer vibes. I was yeah, living for yeah. it. Like the hook hand and like the lights. I will say like this was really shot. It was shot really well. Um, but it was definitely throwing back to that movie specifically because there's that moment when Jennifer Love Hewitt is like look like she's trying to hide and she keeps uncovering all these dead bodies and that kept happening yeah. to Betty. She found that like was freaky. she found like yeah. four fucking dead bodies. I'm like, oh my god, he's literally killing students like in the yeah, moment. He's literally like and that's the one thing that and that's the one thing that i didn't understand where is the fucking fire alarms when you need them can't you just pull the fire where are the fire alarms like where are the dumbass poisons and emergency bodyguards of the school how do the how do the lights just go off like there's supposed to be like emergency lights that turn on when the lights go like none of this seems real and it got to a point where like it was so terrifying that i'm like hey this must be a nightmare yeah. like this is a nightmare she's gonna wake up it's gonna be still season one <laughs> like you know what i mean like i was like praying i'm like oh my god yeah. oh my god it's gonna be a, it's gonna she's be she's gonna nightmare. wake up like, and it's gonna start this all whole over season again. never happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we literally messaged me and she was like this is a nightmare right like this can't I'm be, like, can it be a nightmare can it be a nightmare <laughs> i'm like no girl just get on for the ride and like just hang on tight so no. she has all these <laughs> no thank you so <laughs> she has all these moments in the bathroom and she like turns on the shower head so like he can't find her but whatever he finds she her goes into the storage room which is where this was weird because he she he she goes in there yeah closes the door right and then she tries to call 911 and i don't know what happened there her cell didn't go through or whatever yeah and then he finds her like he knocks on the door because she screams because she, she like turns around and she sees a next dead body in there yeah i'm like this guy's yeah. literally fucking killing like, how did so he kill many so many people what the fuck like those are so then real he people. leaves right <laughs> yeah so he leaves like she after a while of holding the door shut like he just walks away right like I said, very much scream, very much. I know what you did last summer. Like he, op- she opens a door and it's Jughead, and he's like, "What you talking about? Why are you in the closet?" And she was like, "There's literally dead bodies everywhere. Can you please help me?" So finally, they end up back at FP's like place and or like in in the sheriff studio, the sheriff studio, <laughs> the sheriff studio. Office. <laughs> and he's like, "So what's going on? What happened?" And she was like, "The black hood is back." And Jughead says something that was so annoying to me. He was like. I can't believe we missed this. How did we miss this? I'm like, um, Betty didn't miss we it. We didn't miss it. That was <laughs> no, season two, okay. homie. We didn't miss it. We were done. We were done. And now it's That back. was last season storyline. So. I can't. Um, I can't. So then that happens. And then the episode ends off with um, Betty going back to Alice and sa- saying to her, dad's back 100 percent. he's probably gonna come back here because i done told him about the fact that you guys are getting married and like you're adopting yeah and she was like why the fuck would you talk to him and she was like because you're fucking crazy and i couldn't talk to anybody else like i don't have any parents i don't have a mom yeah so uh she's like i don't know what to do like i'm so scared and then from like the back corner chad michael murray slash edgar is like this place has many walls this is a fortress i'm like Bitch, the same Game of Thrones. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, this like, is a winter fell. Like, calm winter the fuck fell. down. And he's like, he's like, we will protect you here. And then she agrees to stay. She's there like, are you going to stay, buddy? Are you going to stay? And she's like, yeah. So basically, she is playing right into his hand, which is so transparent and so obvious. For a show that has been throwing us a million loops, this is going to be the most predictable storyline ever. Like... Obviously, Edgar's a part of it. He wants her a part of the fucking farm. She this like so this was been this has been his end goal this whole time. I would not be surprised if he was the one that was orchestrating this whole situation to begin with. Um, so I definitely think that he's involved to some degree. I don't know like a hundred percent how much, but he's definitely involved. Um, you were talking about Penelope earlier. I definitely think that she's involved. For all we know, she was the one in the Gargoyle King suit and yeah. like fucking her up like that. Oh, yeah, true. Like yeah. if the Black Hood is now back, Penelope's like out here like being his accomplice because they're obviously working together because like he didn't like but run after the, the fucking like, Gargoyle King. They are literally working together now. Yeah. But here's the thing. I don't care anymore. I really don't care. <laughs> Girl, like, you know what I mean? Like, you I gotta honestly care don't. somehow. I don't care who it is because 
it's not going to justify all this bullshit. Yeah. Like, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, we saw that coming. It's going to be like, that. why are we still talking about the Black Hood at this point? Why? Yeah. You guys couldn't come up with someone else? Yeah. It's season seriously. three? You, nothing? You guys had nothing? Cool. You have to recycle a storyline? Right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I don't get it. He has a hook hand. <sighs> That's what's different. That's cool. well, okay. I hope that he dies this season, like a hundred percent. Like I feel they shoot like, him in yeah, the head and like, it's over because yeah, I can't yeah. do another season with the Black Hood coming back with like no hands no. and like he becomes like a two hooked monster. Like I don't no, know. My, my hope, honestly, like my hope, hope, hope for the season finale is just I don't know. They somehow like negate everything that's happened this season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just they're like, no, I don't know. Maybe they're like, okay, we solved it. It's done. We need to like build a new Riverdale and like they just start fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina comes in and she's like, "Guys, you need a yes. new set. <gasps> Got it. Yes. We're gonna reset she's everything." Like, oh yeah. my god! Apparently, there is a Sabrina connection at the end of this season on Riverdale. Shut up! Really? Yeah, I heard someone talk about it on Twitter. I saw someone talk uh, talk about it on Twitter. Oh how maybe god. the season finale is gonna connect to it, but who knows? I'm who knows? down for that actually. But I hope yeah. the I hope it actually is like her creating a spell to like reverse Literally. everything in time. Like Betty goes to her and she's like, "Can you just reverse time and like start over?" And then yeah. she's like, "Yeah, I will." She's cool, like, bye. "I can do it for you, but I can't do it for all of the fans that have been watching the show." I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let's get into our questions. Yeah. So we got a few online. So the first ones were from Postmaster Radio. Uh, he asks about the whole thing with Betty. Was that really Hal trying to kill Betty? I don't remember him having a hook for a hand. So he lost his hand, obviously, through the, like, whatever. The accident or whatever, So the assumption yeah. is that it is Betty's dad uh, with the hook hand now. The next question is, is Edgar setting the whole thing up to trick Betty into joining the farm? Probably. Probably. Yeah, I, yeah. I can see that happening. And, uh, yeah, he just makes a comment. The Gargoyle King and Farmer are enough. Why bring the Black Hood into all of this? I really hope that this makes sense. It won't, but it's fine. We're just going to move on, finish the season, and enjoy our summers. The next question that he has is, couldn't there be more prom stuff and less of the farm and gargoyle king tonight? I mean, absolutely. Mm -hmm. As you've heard, yep. our complaints especially, and be not okay with this part of the episode. Yes, I agree. There definitely should have been Agreed. more prom. Um, I will say that it is their junior prom and not their senior prom, and there is a difference. It is, yeah. So, so they better fucking shape up next year. <laughs> they sure. better fucking shape up next year. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, big time. Yeah, and uh, um, he says, "Why didn't we? Why did we have to get another Archie acts like an idiot storyline? Fangs and Kevin should have had a bigger role in this episode. Also, I love the little Luke tribute." Is the Luke tribute what they have at the end of every episode now? Is that I'm what he meant? I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't see it. I don't know. I'm not I sure. didn't see the text or whatever. Maybe. Um, we do also have a question from at Cowell's Endgame. Ooh. And he says, "Do you think Betty will join the farm, or is she just staying there? And what are your thoughts on the theory sprouting that the farm orchestrated Betty's prom night attack from Hal's death to the end?" The farm orchestrated Betty's prom night attack from Hal's death to the end. His death to the end. I'm. I can imagine the farm being a part of it, but yeah, I, like, but. and that's what kind of gets her to join the farm. But I don't understand yeah. why, like, Hal would be working with Edgar, like, unless it's I not Hal know. and it's really Chick, like we're seeing, really and then chick. like, right. like Chick and Edgar are working together. I don't know. Yeah, some black yeah. Ass shit. I can definitely see that happen. Yeah. Um, so that's the questions that we have. A lot of people are saying Archie yeah. needs self love. Everyone is so out of character. Why does this? You why does yeah. all this with the game look like crazy jugheads doing? I don't know. Like it just—it's a lot. Um, let's get into our recap roundups. Recap roundups. Best, best moment. moment. My best moment is gonna go to the core four sitting together Yay. talking about prom. <laughs> Because it lasted for five seconds, but I freaking loved it. Yeah. And I wish they had more of those scenes. Um, yeah, my best moment is the prom opening. Because it felt like a normal like teenager show. And I was okay with yeah. that. I, I yeah. didn't realize how much I wanted it until I saw it. And I was like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. WTF, WTF moment. moment. What's your WTF moment? My WTF moment, I think, has to go to like the Black Hood. Basically, like, man tackling <laughs> Betty to the wall. I literally was like, what the fuck? 
like this girl can't be alive, so she's right? Like die. he, ta- like <laughs> the, the way track. he tackled her, like the sound effect that they put for it. I'm like, yo, this guy, guy like body slammed this body girl. Slammed How is she still alive? And it just like kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, and just to see the black hood back, I was like, really, guys? Honestly. All right. Um, my WTF moment is going to Betty getting away from the, the Black Hood because I thought that was so yeah. unbelievable. I'm like, she could have died a million yeah. times. So she could have died. He's yeah. either doing it to like just scare her, which makes sense because then it goes to our whole theory with Chick, you know, like being pushing a part of it and pushing farm. her to the farm. But Taken, he like killed like five students yeah. just to do that. Like, like just for fun, you, you killed five students to like get her to be a part of the farm. That's a lot to deal with. MVP. MVP. Who's your MVP? MVP, I think, is gonna go to Betty. Why? You know, I think <laughs> I think though? she's I think she's I don't know. I think she's trying really, really hard to like solve this case and like she didn't want to bring Jackhead into it. And like yeah. I, I totally understand that because like she doesn't want to jeopardize him either. I just don't like I just feel so bad for her because I feel like she's fucked either way and she doesn't have anyone, but she's trying to make it it's work true. as much as she can. Yeah, it's true. Like she has no mom right now and no dad. Yeah. And it's just like hard for her, I feel like. I feel bad for her. Yeah. Uh, my MVP is gonna go to Mary. Cause I think that she like literally yeah. swooped in um yeah. and really like took over this role that was definitely necessary and it's gonna be really hard to see what they do with this storyline just because it's you know like he definitely needs support of all characters archie needs his parents yeah and so without luke perry playing fred it's gonna be a really hard thing for them to manage and hopefully they come up with some sort of answer yeah kg said by the end of the season they still don't resolve it so we won't know really what happens to fred's character until next season yeah, I can see that. Like in terms of like if they're gonna if they're gonna replace him or like just write off his character, like they still haven't figured it out by the end of the season, so whatever. Yeah, we'll see. LVP. Who is your LVP? My LVP is gonna go to FP because I feel okay. like as a sheriff, like you should be able to manage these things on your own without involving your sixteen year old son. <laughs> Agreed. Um, and I just feel like he he's just like slow. He's just like slow to the next day. Yeah. Thing. I don't know. I I think he took over this job and it didn't really make sense. And like he like Sheriff Keller would have been like way better at this point. Like let's be yeah. Real. What is Sheriff Keller doing? Can we bring him back? Because like he was fucking hot Sierra. Too. Like who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Like he could be helping on the side tip. Like couldn't he just be rehired by FP at this yeah, point? Yeah, like call up Sheriff Keller. <laughs> what like, are you calling fuck. up your son? Like honestly. Um, my LVP is gonna go to Cheryl because she like literally flipped her switch like within one yeah. episode and was like, I don't want to be part of the farm anymore. Um, I was like, bitch, like you're yeah. useless. Like where were you two, four, like four episodes ago? The, the best, best line. line. What was your best line? My best line is gonna go to Veronica and Archie when she's like, this time we can take my father down for good. And Archie's like, hell yeah. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Hashtag Archie. Like, they're just. Like, this is what they do. They try to yeah. bring Hiram down together. Fine, I guess. Whatever. And I just loved how, like, Archie is just there for her no matter what. Like, he was like, True. I've had the worst year of my life. But, like, hell yeah, I'm going to bring your dad down with you. Like, he was so like, in it. Your dad almost die. tried to kill me so it once, so but we'll do yeah. this. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. do it again. Yeah, no worries. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, my best line is going to Veronica because I feel like it sums up how everybody feels about the show right now. Promise yes. this weekend we still do these kinds of things here. I'm like, yeah, I was I'm surprised. I'm like, yes, too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm like, girl. Um, so yeah. we're gonna read a bunch of your guys's uh roundups really quickly. We're gonna go with Becca Sarah first. Her MVP was Mary. Shout out, girl. Um, our LVPs plural are Evelyn, Cheryl, and Jughead. And her best, her WTF moment was Jughead not showing FP the, <laughs> the G and G book. Uh, she says you're supposed to be helping your dad, Jughead. And there's a lot of other things. She talks about Cheryl and being like a loser for picking the farm over wanting to be prom queen. And her best moment uh, killed me. Her best moment, she says, you know my <laughs> best moment. I love seeing Chad Michael Murray shirtless. I'm like, yes, yeah. bitch. Um, best lines uh, she says Betty saying uh, he's a serial killer like my dad acts I just want this to end I'm like me too girl me too too. (laughs) Um, we have ones from Postmaster Radio his best moment was a slow dance as a prom same WTF moment the awkward Varchi promposal and 
pop, oh. pop dropping that bombshell on Veronica. That's true. That was a pretty surprising <laughs> so moment. So true. That was funny. He was like, sorry, girl. Um, MVP is Betty. His LVP is Archie. And his best line is Cheryl telling Evelyn, aren't you like 30? How many proms have you been to? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so true. And then we have one from uh, Nico and his... Uh, best Nico. moment is the parallels of both Betty and her mom having the, to deal with the Gargoyle King from Alice's Ascension Night to the Midnight Club and then Prom Night for yeah. um, Prom Night for Betty and how it's like almost foreshadowing or no sorry back and forth showing that they both have to similarly deal with Riverdale the same way like they're both dealing with the same shit um, his best line is the way Bughead asks each like how they asked each other to prom and uh, his mvp was yeah. betty lvp was archie his wcf moment was the black hood chasing betty it was seriously intense das de tido yeah. yeah it was yeah damn so that is That's the episode it, guys right? let us know what you guys thought about this episode make sure you guys are joining the discussion we will be back there's only two more episodes left thank goodness um and just make sure that you guys stick around we are going to quickly plug before i move on to the rest of our announcements that we are having a riverdale rap party i want to call it a rap party but it's like a little live yeah. tweet and chat session season finale that party we're gonna- yeah we're gonna have a season finale party so we're gonna still have the same podcast for our regular viewers but if you want a little inclusive exclusive parte slash kind of get together online um nb and i are going to be hosting a little get together um but it is exclusive to our patreon uh members only so if you haven't signed up or if you'd like to sign up for the month that's cool um just sign up at patreon.com slash recap underscore rewind and you can check out all of our cool stuff on there on top of joining us on thursday may 16th at 8 p.m est for that little shindig so make sure you guys check us out it's gonna be fun i think it's gonna be fun it's gonna be so lit um that being said i want to thank our patrons of this episode our lit rewinders tina and sarge serena and kate and our mommy rewinders becca sarah tamala and taya and if you would like to join our Patreon family, check us out at patreon.com slash recap underscore rewind. If you join, you'll get access to all things recap rewind, exclusive contests, content, updates, and access to our rap party season finale for Riverdale. So yeah, check join. Us out. And also make sure you guys are checking us out on all of our socials, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. And you can also find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iTunes. Like, subscribe, follow, review, and comment to stay engaged with us at Recap Rewind. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Bye.